some of you guys were not fans of the last Perfection Videos title. So to make it up to you, I'm just going to do it in under 24 hours. It's not that hard. Right? Right? Because of the outrage of the last Perfection Runs title, I thought it would be funny just to one-up them and do it in less than 24 hours. I also did this because I love Pain and Misery, so I decided to just make it even harder on myself by not allowing any third-party tools that use the save file or the seed of the file. This means no Mousy Pounds predictor for geodes, no Mousy Pounds checkup to tell me which items I forgot to donate to the museum, and no Blades predictor. I will still be using the glitchless rule set used on speedrun.com, but no, I will not be doing this in one session. As much as I love pain and suffering, but I just don't hate myself that much to play a game for 24 hours straight. You may think this is impossible because to achieve perfection in under 24 hours, I would actually have to cut out 4 hours of my previous run's time, as well as I'm doing this with a harder rule set. To counteract this, I wasted two weeks of my life planning out how I was going to do this run. And let me tell you, after those two weeks, I still had no clue how I was going to achieve perfection in under 24 hours. There's so much RNG throughout the entirety of perfection, and if any of it goes horribly wrong, the run is just completely screwed. So with my half-baked plan, I started doing runs thinking, what's the worst that can happen? I waste 24 hours of my life. Oh well. Yeah, I didn't actually do this on my first try. I had a few attempts that died around the 4-8 to eight hour mark due to just not getting lucky enough with different bits of RNG like dwarf scrolls, resources from the mines, not enough luck days to go to the mines, money, you name it, it probably happened. But I kept at it, going until I finally got a run off the ground, and it all started with the 15 parsnips Mayor Lewis gives you. And when I say the run started with these 15 parsnips, I really meant it. I spent hours just planting these 15 parsnips, sleeping until day 5, and watering them up until day 5, hoping to just get a gold quality parsnip. Now, you may ask, Habu, what makes you stupid enough to reset days 1 through 5 for hours on end just to get one gold quality parsnip? And to answer that question, I won't. I'll just let Blade do it. Hi, I'm Blade. I work magic with RNG. If we know how RNG for an area of the game is initialized and used, we can find patterns. When RNG is called, the game generates a number between 0 and 1. Along with the unique game seed, enchants uses the total number of enchants previously done on the save. If we land our first enchant RNG within a certain number, i.e. between 0 and 0 0.2, we can predict future RNG results. Therefore, we know what to enchant and when to get our target enchants. Golden crop RNG is similar to enchants, but instead of using the number of enchants, it uses day and tile location. This means if we get a golden crop on a certain tile on a certain day, we know what the RNG result number of the first enchant will be. At level 0 farming, the accuracy is within 0.01. At level 1 farming, 0.03. Well within our target range of 0.2. Using this knowledge, I created this crop grid, which gives us a 17% chance of hitting a golden crop. If we hit the golden crop, we will get the enchants we want. If we don't, we reset until we do. In short, we are using crop quality on day 5 to probe the RNG to guarantee we get the enchants we want. For a deeper dive into this topic, have a watch of the video linked here. Thank you Blade for not calling me stupid. The reason this was important was to get 3 specific enchants in the least amount of enchants possible, saving me precious prismatic shards later into the run. These enchants are Artful, Crusader, and Archaeologist. I'll explain the weapon choices later, but there was an oversight with Archaeologist. I thought it would be useful due to needing to complete the whole museum, but I only ended up using it for snake spines. I got the rest of the artifacts via other means. And the best part is, Blade told me after the run, it doesn't even work on snake spines for who knows what reason. Anyways, after I finally got the gold parsnip, my next objective was working towards farming level 2. 
Farming level 2 is extremely important for speedrunning because it unlocks sprinklers. The less watering we have to do, the faster the run will be. We need a total of 380 farming XP to reach farming level 2. We already grew 15 parsnips, so we already had 120 farming XP. I still needed 260 more farming XP to reach level 2 farming, so I started gathering as many mixed seeds as I could. This ended up being one of the reasons why I chose the forest farm over other farming layouts. The forest farm has a special weed type that is a guaranteed mixed seed drop, so it's very easy to gather a lot of mixed seeds early on in the forest farm. It also has the additional benefit of extra hardwood, which I will be using for later to repair the boat. I ended up gathering around 9 mixed seeds, which turned into 7 parsnips and 2 potatoes. I bought an additional 25 parsnips from Pierre's and planted it, and this was just enough XP to reach farming level 2. Now, we needed the materials to even craft the sprinklers once we hit farming level 2, and this is where a little bit of the RNG comes in. I needed a good luck day right after this, so I can go to the mines and get as deep as I want to on the first day. There's only a 35% chance to have good fortune on a day. The reason having good fortune is significant is because it increases the chances of you finding ladders in the mines. The goal of the day was simple. I just wanted to reach floor 40 and gather as much resources as I could along the way. I didn't really have a target amount for copper, quartz, or whatever, I just wanted to gather as much as I could because my main goal was to get into floor 40 on the first day. I ended the day at my target goal which was floor 40. I also had 166 copper ore, 22 quartz, 12 geodes, a few topaz and amethyst, which was an overall good day for my standards. It would make the video way too long to have to show every single last detail of me gathering every single last resource to achieve perfection. That's not the point of this video, the point of this video is to sum up how I did it. After selling all my minerals and geodes, I had around 2000 G, so I immediately went to Clint to upgrade my pickaxe so I could continue making quick work of the mines. On the days waiting for the pickaxe to finish, or just on days that I didn't get the good luck day that I wanted to go to the mines with, I ended up just using all my energy watering my crops and clearing off the farm for wood. Once the copper pickaxe was finished, I immediately picked it up from Clint and then headed straight towards the mines. The goal of this mines day was the exact same as the first one. I wanted about 40 floors while gathering as many resources as I could for sprinklers and gems for money. And by the end of the day, I reached floor 75 with a chest full of loot. The 12th is a very important day. It's the last day to sell anything before the egg festival. And at the egg festival, you can buy strawberries, one of, if not the best spring crop you can plant. And I was planning on getting 100 of them. For those who don't know, each strawberry seed is worth 100 G each, so I need in total 10,000 G to be able to afford everything. So I'm going to be using a mid-max strat we called diamond farming. The strat name already explains what we're farming for, diamonds. But the reason it's diamonds is because they have a special property that allows them to spawn on floors of multiple of 5. This allows us to reset floors at an extremely fast rate. It allows me to check 20 floors a minute looking for diamonds. I did this by just switching between 55, 65, and 75 and then back to zero to reset all three floors over and over and over again until I found as many diamonds as I could. I also occasionally made my way down to floor 21 and 41 for iron and copper respectively. By the end of the day, I had enough copper and iron bars for 25 sprinklers, which will cover all 100 strawberries and 7 diamonds, with a bunch of other gems for selling, which didn't end up selling for the 10,000 G I wanted, but it was good enough for what I needed, which was level 6 farming for summer. I wanted level 6 farming for quality sprinklers, so before I slept the summer, I still needed gold ore. After a day of farming iron, gold, and quartz, I had enough resources to craft 25 quality sprinklers and everything I needed to complete the boiler room. Summer is what I'll be using to accelerate my money. It'll allow me to pay for preserve jars for fall as well as a few other things like backpack upgrades in the vault. I'll be using everybody's favorite crop this time, blueberries. I trash talk blueberries a lot, but when you don't have preserve jars set up yet, they are always better than melons, and we do need a lot of money fast, so even doing melons with preserve jars will be too slow for what I'm trying to do. After clearing the area right below the greenhouse, I set up my newly acquired 25 quality sprinklers and readied the ground for 300 blueberry seeds. Before I left for Pierre's, I put pathing down around my small oak tree farm and made pathways with it. This is mainly to prevent debris and the trees from spreading other oak trees everywhere. This will save me a lot of hassle later down the line from having to clear it every single season. Once everything was planted, I did what everybody wished they could do. Sleep for two weeks straight. After harvesting my first round of blueberries, it was finally time to start working on completing the community center. 
And when I say completing the community center, I mean only the boiler room and the vault. Because right after I gave the Judamos the stuff to repair the rooms, I immediately sold them out to Jojo Mart because there's no way in hell I'm finishing this run in under 24 hours while doing the community center. Sorry, Junimos. Even after being sold out, the Junimos will still repair the bus and the mine carts overnight. Before going home to sleep to the next blueberry harvest, I stopped by Clint's to start upgrading my axe. I harvested the blueberries on the 19th and the 24th, but went out again specifically on the 25th, which is a Thursday. The reason I needed it to be a Thursday is because on Thursday, Sandy will sell Deluxe Speed Grow for 80G each. I bought 110 DSG and Starfruit Seeds and then I headed to Joja to buy the greenhouse. I also picked up my Copper Axe and immediately shoved it right back to Clint to upgrade it to Steel. After one more blueberry harvest on the 28th, we are now into fall. In fall, I moved 16 of my 25 quality sprinklers inside the newly built greenhouse. I then proceeded to plant my DSG and starfruit that I just bought. And then I used the remaining 172 sprinkler spots for pumpkins. I'll have preserve jars later in fall so there's no point of going cranberries like I explained in my previous perfection video. On fall 2nd, the special orders board finally unlocks, and there is one quest in particular that gives one of the best items in the game, and that quest is the Prismatic Jelly Quest, and the reward for completing it? Monster Musk, which doubles the spawn rates of enemies. This item might sound bad, for that more enemies will just slow me down, right? No, I need to kill thousands of enemies for the monster eradication goals, and Monster Musk will significantly speed this up. The parsnip stuff that we did at the start of the run can help determine if we have the prismatic slime quest, but it's not totally consistent, so it was still a gamble about whether we'll get this quest or not. But we got lucky and the quest showed up on the second. For the quest itself, it's normally not that hard to find a prismatic slime. The easiest and fastest way to do it is just going out on a good luck day and just keep resetting floor 5 over and over and over again. But unfortunately for me, I got no good luck days this week and got extremely unlucky with its spawn overall. It took me almost 20 minutes of floor resetting to find it, and the worst part, I didn't even notice the one that spawned on the floor before this. So I found two back to back after 20 minutes of searching. After giving the jelly to the wizard and receiving the recipe the next day, I continued my hibernation until the next pumpkin harvest. And now that the pumpkins are fully grown, it's finally time to set up some preserved jars. I already bought the resources for 16 jars when I was trying to get the prismatic jelly, which also had starfruit in them already due to them finishing earlier because of the DSG. With the newly acquired starfruit jelly and pumpkins, I sold all the starfruit jelly and all the quality pumpkins to afford more starfruit seeds as well as even more preserved jars. I now had a total of 32 preserved jars all making starfruit jelly, which with Artisan sells for 2170 G each. I removed everything but my bed for my house and just filled the little shack grandpa left me with with preserved jars. The only thing I had left to do in fall is stop by both festivals. Both had things I needed for perfection, so I had to do them eventually. I won the fair and played the slingshot minigame a few times before betting everything on green to get the fair points needed to buy the rare crow and the star drop. I stopped by the spirit sea festival to pick up another rare crow and crafting recipe, but not before spending the entire day dust sprite farming. Like last run, I wanted the burglar's ring before I go to Ginger Island so that the enemies there can drop me more cinder shards, so I had all day before the festival to farm for them. I didn't quite kill all 500 I needed to get it, but it was a good start and I can easily finish it in winter, and if you don't believe me about Monster Musk helping, look at some of these floors I got. Well enough dust sprites to get the burglar's ring today, but we're making it go by faster for the next time. This floor. Uh, repeatedly. Winter was more of the same, harvesting, planting, jarring starfruit to stockpile money. I needed this money for resources from Robin and Clint before their prices increased in year two. I wanted to buy all the wood, stone, copper, iron, and coal I needed for the rest of my run. In winter, I also finally got to the bottom of the mines. I needed iridium to repair the boat, so I needed to make my way to Skull Caverns eventually. I did need one more thing before I actually went to Skull Caverns, though. And no, it's not the Galaxy Sword. That was trashed right after the dive. Thank you for your services. But I need to be able to talk to the dwarf to buy bombs. And just like everything else in the run, I was actually lucky enough to get all the dwarf scrolls just going down in the mines without any extra farming. After getting the Dwarvish translation guide from Gunther and buying 120 bombs from the dwarf, on the next good luck day, I went to Skull Caverns. 
Because I had a minimal loadout for the Skull Caverns run with only having bombs and not explosive ammo, I was really only looking for about 2 to 300 ore of each type. The ore wasn't even the main focus of the run though. I really needed 4 prismatic shards. The prismatic shards are going to be used for enchanting along with getting the galaxy swords so I can actually buy the galaxy hammer. At first the run was actually going quite slow. I was only on floor 40 by noon and I wanted to be much deeper so I had a higher chance of finding iridium nodes thus giving me more chances to get prismatic shards. After a bit of complaining I got my first lucky break on floor 49 where I got my first prismatic shard paired with a drop shaft. Drop shafts are super important in Skull Cavern runs because they can drop you anywhere between 3 and 15 floors, making the trip down to the deeper levels of Skull Caverns that much quicker. I continued down picking up scraps of Iridium and occasionally finding a few drop shafts, but it took me until floor 73 to find my second Prismatic Shard. Every Iridium node has a 4% chance of dropping a Prismatic Shard, so only having 55 Iridium ore and having 2 Prismatic Shards already is extremely lucky. I continued downwards blowing every rock up in my path and 15 floors later I actually got a third prismatic shard. I was expecting to barely get 4 shards for the entire run and I still had 10 hours left so this was a really good pace. My ore counts were a little low at this point so since I already had 3 prismatic shards I started focusing on basic ore for my sprinklers and kegs later on. And I'm sorry for those who struggle with finding prismatic shards but my luck did not cool down because on floor 97 it produced yet another prismatic. At this point, the only thing I was low on was iron ore, so I started focusing on that. Everything else that I got on this day will be the cherry on top of an already great dive. And that cherry came, as I ended up getting another 5 more prismatic shards before running out of bombs. On floor 114, 117, 118, and 121. I also ended the run with 370 iridium ore, which was way overkill for what I needed and I had extra time to stop by the Adventurers Guild to purchase the Galaxy Hammer. With our main objective out of the way this winter, all I had left to do before starting year 2 was collect the remaining hardwood for the boat, pay the final services at Jojimart, and buy all the resources we needed for the rest of the run. I smelted all the resources I got from Skull Caverns while I was out collecting hardwood, and on the 26th, I sold all the starfruit jelly I had totaling up to 500,000 G, and went to buy the resources. I bought 1,100 iron ore, 600 coal, 750 copper ore, 10,000 wood, and 5,000 stone. Most of these resources will go towards crafting kegs, but I do need to make 17 million G total for everything, and wine is the best way to do it. I repaired the boat on the 28th of winter, and set sail to Ginger Island on the 1st of spring year 2. My Ginger Island route has always been the same. I collect every single nut I can, do a volcano dungeon run, and then unlock the island farmhouse. In the volcano dungeon I'm looking for a few things. Cinder shards are my top priority. I need them to upgrade my equipment which will make future volcano runs even faster. I also need dragon's teeth for the island obelisk and warp totem recipe. And finally, all the golden walnuts that are hidden in the volcano itself. Once I have the forge unlocked, I can start enchanting my tools and weapons. Now I don't get anywhere near enough cinder shards to enchant everything with only one run, but I'm not going to cover every individual run I do of the volcano. But like Blade said at the start of the video, I already know what the tool order I'm going to be enchanting is, to get all the enchantments I want. That said, the first thing I did with my cinder shards was combine my rings. I wanted the burglar's ring and magnet ring combined so I can have the increased drop chances as well as the increased magnetic effect. The next thing I wanted to enchant was my weapons. And yes, I do mean weapons as plural. I was dual wielding this time with a hammer and dagger combo. I would use the hammer for most enemies as it was the most effective way to kill them, but the dagger excels at killing ghosts with its 1.5 buffs. And this is why I said I was going to get both Artful and Crusader. Artful for the hammer and Crusader for the dagger, which I will be using to exclusively kill ghosts. The dagger I will be using is the Galaxy Dagger, which I have yet to pick up because I couldn't afford it when I was buying the Galaxy Hammer. And the gems that I'll be putting on them are 3 rubies for the hammer to just increase its base damage, and aquamarines on the dagger to increase its crit chance. I am specced into the crit tree so I can get acrobat later on, so my crit chance with the dagger while fully enchanted is around a 62%. I didn't have the rings yet, but my final ring loadout was going to end up being a burglar's ring combined with an iridium band, and a savage ring combined with an iridium band. After repairing the island farmhouse, I started clearing off the island farm. This is where we're going to start our wine empire, and if you're wondering what crop I'll be using to do this, it will be ancient fruit. 
If you're wondering where I got this ancient fruit seed from, I got it while farming for it in winter with Monster Musk, while completing both the skeleton and the cave insect monster quest. The plan was basically to sleep for a year, slowly growing and increasing the number of ancient fruit I get with seed makers. Now this may sound slow, but if I were to only include sleeping time and I slept through an entire year straight, it will only take about 8 minutes. I also could have used this time to grow a few other crops, namely I wanted to plant 150 parsnip seeds. Why parsnip seeds? I wanted to get 5 golden walnuts that you get from harvesting crops on Ginger Island. If you ask yourself why not just wait for the ancient seeds to grow up to do this, for whatever reason, you can only get golden walnuts from non-multi-harvestable crops. So I'm forced to do this with another crop to get walnuts. I also started planting summer seeds. I needed level 10 foraging, and since my sprinklers were unused right now, I thought why not just farm some foraging levels. I also wasn't going to be wasting the entire next year just to grow up some ancient fruit. I had a few other things that I had to do. For the first two weeks of spring, I was still going to the volcano every day looking for cinder shards, dragon's teeth, and the remaining golden walnuts. I also still needed to kill 250 magma sprites for the eradication goal, but that will be finished off later. The other big thing that I wanted to do was unlock Key's walnut room, so I can gain access to the dangerous mines and the rewards Key offers. I still needed a few more nuts to unlock it, and I was mostly stuck just waiting for my crops to grow to get them. After talking to Bumbo, yes I call him Bumbo, don't judge, and beating some pirates and darts, I had the nut room unlocked on the 14th of spring. On the quest board I was only looking for 3 quests in particular. Ease Cuisine, which gives a decent amount of key gems for a short time slash money investment. Danger in the Deep, which allows me to make the regular mines into the dangerous mode variant. And finally, the Skull Cavern Invasion, which allows me to farm for Omni Geodes. In total, I needed 210 key gems. I needed this for all the crafting recipes Key had to offer, keys to the town, and Pierre's missing shopping list. At this point, it was just a waiting game waiting for the key quests I wanted to show up, while also just waiting for the ancient fruit themselves to grow so I can multiply them. So I started only going out on Mondays, because that is when the special orders board and the key quest board resets. I also used this opportunity to harvest any crops that were done on my farm. I did get a few key cuisine quests, which is very nice for some extra key gems, but it took until the fourth week of summer to get the quests that I actually needed. The danger in the deep quest makes the regular mines into the hard mode variant, and the quest gives you a week to reach the bottom of the mines, which won't be too difficult for us now that we have explosive ammo after killing so many monsters. Oh, and if you ever want to make it even more of a challenge, or by my definition, a fun time, Go to floor 81 plus with Monster Musk, and it makes the dive very interesting. The second quest I needed was the Skull Cavern Invasion Challenge. This just basically makes the Skull Caverns the hard mode variant as well. The challenge wants you to get to floor 100, but I never planned on actually completing it. My goal was to just farm Omni Geodes from the Carbon Ghosts there. Carbon Ghosts have a 99% drop chance to drop an Omni Geode, so paired with a Burglar's Ring, I'm basically guaranteed 2 Omni Geodes per Ghost kill. I was going to need anywhere between 4 and 500 Omni Geodes to be able to complete this run. And if you're wondering why I'm using the Dangerous Skull Cavern variant over the regular Skull Cavern, it's because the base spawn chance of monsters is double in the hard mode variant. And then adding on Monster Musk, it basically quadrupled the spawns compared to normal Skull Caverns. And this is where the dagger finally comes into play. On patch 1.5, it gained a pin effect on its special attack, making it so the ghosts just don't shoot away as soon as I attack them, making them much less painless to kill. This way of farming Omni Geos isn't that much faster than just blowing up floors on Skull Caverns with bombs, but the reason I'm doing it like this is because it doesn't nearly cost as much resources to do so. I farmed Omni Geodes for about 45 minutes and ended up with about 300, which is all I needed right now to open up the sewer. Now would normally be the time I tell chat to go get some food and get comfortable, because opening up 300 Omni Geodes at Clint's takes around 40 minutes. But not this time, because while testing, somebody recommended me to use the Geo Crusher, which is a machine that you get from Clint after completing one of his special orders tasks. It's not too expensive to craft, only taking a diamond each, but it allows me to mass open up geodes without having to wait for Clint. The only downside of this is now it costs one coal to open up a geode, as well it takes an hour to process. 
but luckily for me i already bought extra coal in year one and i'm still waiting for the ancient fruit to grow up so all i had to do is throw the omni geodes into the geo crushers and then sleep so at this point i was just waking up to crush geodes i was still sleeping for my ancient fruit to finish and after the 11 hour mark i finally finished my field of ancient fruit i started placing pegs i crafted from the resources i bought and gathered in year one around 200 in total I also set up a few more crystal ariums from the batteries I got from the lightning rod that I got from the community center. I started duplicating diamonds for coffee, rubies for spicy eels, and jades for staircases. And once again, I started going out every single Monday, harvesting ancient fruit, whining the ancient fruit, and checking the key quest board and the special orders board. We did get a visit from grandpa at the start of year three and he was pretty proud of our imitation of him because we were just dead asleep trying to make as much money as we could. That said, I did make a few trips back to Pelican Town to talk to Robin about building me a deluxe coop. I needed a bunch of rabbit's feet for gifts. I was going with the same gifting strategy as last run where I would gift everybody iridium quality rabbit's feet. I was going to gift these on their birthday so they would instantly give me four hearts with them. And then I would repeat this for three years and then everybody would be max friendship with me. Well, everybody but Penny. Who may I add is probably the only sane person in this town to hate a dilapidated foot of an animal as a gift, but I digress. I set up the rabbits with a lifetime supply of hay and an auto petter that I bought from Joja Mart and then continued my everlasting slumber. I did do a few other things during this time when I waited to harvest and wine ancient fruit. Firstly, I got another Skull Cavern invasion quest, so I finished up the last bit of Omni Geode farming I needed to do for the run. I also bought a few Deez Constructors from Key's shop. The reason I did this was because I needed a lot of fiber, and the easiest way for me to get fiber was to just buy Grass Starter from Pierre, put it into the Deconstructor, and then I would instantly get fiber back for it. I need a lot of fiber for two reasons. One, for crafting. There's a lot of crafting recipes that just use a bunch of fiber. And the second reason I want it is for farm warp totems. The return rod is just not worth the $2 million price tag, so I'm going to be using farm warp totems instead. The only other resource that's a pain to get in the crafting recipe for the farm warp totem is honey, but luckily you can just buy honey from Sandy's in an unlimited amount for 200g each on Tuesdays. In late spring, I finally started fishing. And by fishing, I mean I got level 3 fishing, bought 200 crab pots, and then slowly farmed up fishing levels that way. I couldn't use fish pond manip that run, so this is the next fastest way. And once fall finally came around, I started gifting everybody. I had a small stockpile of iridium quality rabbit's feet, as well as I grew melons in summer for Penny. At this point, I was getting iridium quality rabbit's feet at a faster rate than birthdays came up, so I was good to start gifting. The cycle of harvesting, kegging, fishing, and gifting was basically my life for the next two in-game months, or around three hours of real life time. And by the end of winter, I finally had the first part of my money making scheme finished. I had all 7,000 ancient fruit harvest. Now I just needed to finish whining them. I removed all the ancient fruit from my farm, planted the most chaotic field of crops I've ever done, and then moved on to year four. At this point, all we had left was two more rounds of gifting, fishing, a few artifacts, cooking, crafting, a few more monster slayer goals, a couple golden walnuts left to find, and then finally finishing up money. Which sounds like a lot, but I can't do some of that until I'm done with friendships and money. My big goals of year four was catching the remaining fish I needed, whining the rest of the ancient fruit, organizing my cooking and crafting ingredients, and gifting the second round of NPCs. I ended up selling my stockpile of wine in fall so I could buy the golden clock. At this point I've already finished up fishing as well so it's time to move on to year 5. If everything goes to plan year 5 should be the year we finish in. All I'm waiting on is friendship points and that still took me up until fall to finish. I also still needed to marry somebody and again like last time I let my chat vote. This time they chose Leah which worked out great for me because I could get 14 hearts with her very easy with her birthday coming up in winter. Once I got all my friendship points I needed, I started cooking and crafting every single recipe. Unfortunately, I didn't end up having all the ingredients I needed. I was missing a few morels, which means I do have to go to year six, but at least it's only until spring. For full shipment, I was also missing an item, but thankfully it was strawberries, which is also in spring. I had a few more things before I could finish the run and I only had an hour left. 
I also still needed to marry Leah. So after proposing to her and then gifting her a rabbit's foot on her birthday, she instantly gave me the star drop. The last artifact I needed was the yellow strange doll, which can easily be gotten once you have secret note 18. The issue? I had every single secret note but secret note 18. So I spent literally 10 minutes looking for this single secret note so I can get the strange doll, which I only had about 30 minutes left in the entire run to get this under the 24 hour mark. Once in spring, I got the morels I needed for cooking and crafting, so all I needed to do was get the remaining golden walnuts and to grow a single strawberry. After consulting with the perfection tracker for the first time in the entire run, I was only missing four more golden walnuts. Three of those four golden walnuts were from giving the banana to the gorilla. And after losing a few brain cells along the way... Banana! Ooh. I checked with the parrot to tell me where the last golden walnut was. It was on the island farm, and it was in a pretty obvious spot. I got a single strawberry seed on the 13th, and then immediately planted it and slept so it would grow. The last moments of the run is pretty tense, so I'm just going to let it play out. But just know that the time doesn't end until I enter the final cutscene at the summit. I got the X marks the spot one, yeah. I got the secret forest one, yeah. You know, I think we're gonna have perfection in time, but my timer ends when I get to the cutscene. It all comes down to how fast I can find this last nut. No, it would have said the muscles one. Now I have the ones from the note. Got it. Ugh. That should be it. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about the fucking cutscene. No, I'm missing something. I didn't get the achievement. Well, that's why I have to sleep another day. No, I didn't get the... Oh, there it is. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Go faster. There it is. I knew I, I just had to sleep a day. Fast, fast, fast. Saved? Saved? <laughs> Wait. Oh, God. I think we have it. By less than two minutes. <laughs> what the fuck? I did not expect this one. I was all down. Because I thought we weren't going to do it. Oh, my Lord. I had a lot of fun doing this run, and if you're catching this when it releases, I'm doing another perfection run right now. But if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you leave it a like and subscribe. It helps out the channel greatly. But anyways, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and peace!